Jake the Film Guy here, and what I want to do with you today is walk you through what you need to set as expectations for your casting director, and more importantly, why you should get a casting director. Let's dive right in. When I did this Powers and Principalities pilot promo just a couple of months ago, well, I realized pretty quickly I can't do everything, and I'll always be working on this, as will you and that is delegating. We have to delegate. We're not gonna level up as filmmakers unless we decide we're gonna delegate. So, I asked my wife if she would help with this because in the past, years ago when we were in Utah, we did a micro-budget feature. She was the casting director and she did it beautifully. Now, neither of us like doing administrative tasks. You might not even like doing administrative tasks, but she is the perfect blend of an extrovert and an introvert. She understands the sensibilities of people near and far, and so she's able to identify with people, be warm and inviting and friendly, and more importantly, encouraging. How many times have we walked onto those sets where we've had the auditions, we've seen the filmmakers just usher people in and out like they're cattle? Come on, guys, love your neighbor as yourself. We got to show respect. All right, so let's break it down. Here are a couple of things that you need to do as you get your casting director. First of all, where the heck do you find one? If you don't have a significant other that you can ask to be a part of this project, I recommend going to Facebook groups. Be a part of them, be involved. Don't just show up out of the blue and start making casting call announcements. Although you could do that, I highly recommend that months ahead of time you start engaging with that community, liking, commenting, maybe even sharing a post or two to it just so that you can start to introduce yourself and vice versa. Go to the Facebook groups, do not post this on Craigslist. You're gonna get what you might expect on Craigslist. Then, once you've got the casting director in place, you're gonna to have to work out some kind of agreement with them so that they're on board with you. If you have to hire one, I highly recommend looking at this guide on subcontracting these crew positions. Right here, maybe it's here. If you already have the casting director in place, if you've already got them contracted, then you need to start spelling out expectations. I want you to greet people with a smile. Basic customs and courtesies here, folks. I don't know what it is about micro-budget filmmaking, but we think we're all that. We're not. We are average bears. If anything, we should be going out of our way to make people feel comfortable. This is something so simple. Shake hands, make eye contact, say thank you. Treat others as you would like to be treated. And you know what? Go one step further. Treat others how they would like to be treated. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna actually have some kind of a landing page for these actors. They're gonna come and see you eventually for that in-person audition. But until that point in time, you might wanna consider a video audition. This was a screener that we used and it worked out really well for us so that we could actually get all of our ducks in a row before we went forward with X, Y, and Z. So let me explain. If you've got a homepage, if even you just got a Facebook page, have people start submitting video auditions to you. They can submit an unlisted link to YouTube of their video. It doesn't need to be complicated. They can shoot on their iPhone landscape mode, uh, portrait mode, doesn't matter. Have people send you a video audition and invite them to do a couple of lines from their sides so that you can actually get a feel for their abilities. This saves them time of having to go out, it saves their gas, it saves you time and gas, and it allows you to start focusing on a niche group. And that's what we did. And then after you've got that set up, you wanna go and find a place where you can actually bring people in and audition them. I recommend the library. If you've got a space that's actually shaped like a conference room, that's good too. But if you don't, go to your local library. A, the library's amazing. B, it'll be quiet. C, there's not a mad rush to get into those conference rooms. They do get checked out from time to time. Stop by and talk to them or go online and visit your library. Ours was about 40 bucks and it worked out beautifully. It saved us a lot of time and headache and it kept people from coming to our house, people that we didn't know. Now, I'm all for showing love and grace to the broken, lost, and hurting people of this world. I do believe in loving your neighbor as yourself. At the same time as a family man, I have to make sure that I'm being responsible here and not just inviting any old Uncle Bob into my home. If after doing the shoot with him, I wanna bring him back to the place to do ADR, that's another story, because by that point in time, I've been able to be a better judge of his character. Hopefully the same will happen for you too. So in the meantime, go somewhere public like the library. It's just simpler. After you've gotten the library set up, after you've gotten those video auditions and you've recorded them, you are then going to give total control to your casting director. Do not interfere. If you brought them on board, whether they're paid or not, you have to delegate that authority to them. Explain to them that you are an influencer, but they are the final decision maker. And you gotta fight that nature that says, I wanna do it. 
you want to produce, if you want to direct, if you want to do both, that's one thing. But to actually have a casting director and allow them to carry the ball downfield, you need to let them have the final say so. They will have gone through the script, they will understand the story, they will know, because you are too subjective, it's your story after all, they will know objectively who to include and who not to. Now, the casting director is gonna to need to have some kind of way to communicate with folks. Email is great, obviously, because that allows not only a visual, but a record of these communications. Also, having a special email account. It could be Uncle Bob shortfilmcasting at gmail.com. Having a dedicated email account allows all of these video submissions and interactions with these actors to be in one central place and not have it mixed up with all the other different emails that you have flooding your inbox. I recommend building a newsletter. You could also use MailChimp. Let people know you're gonna be adding them to the newsletter and they can unsubscribe at any time, but this way you can send mass updates to everybody, such as, hey, we are going through everything. We will follow up with you in two weeks. And if you don't hear from us, we are not moving forward with you. Thank you so much for being a part of this. When you are getting these actors involved in this day and age, you would think that this is an obvious, but I forget, you might forget, ask for their phone number. Every time they come on audition, every time they send information, ask for name, number, email. That's all I've got for you today, but in the meantime, if you want more, you can go to the website and download the form that I use for actors. It's the standard image and audio release, but it's also got a few other things that I've learned along the way that are useful. Discussions on ADR, payment, how, when, and where they're gonna be paid. Actors would like to know this, wouldn't you? It's all one form for you to use, yours totally free when you join the newsletter, but the standard disclaimer applies. I and my people are poor substitutes for legal counsel. We just aren't cut out for it. This form's use or misuse is ultimately on you. It is your responsibility, as everything should be with filmmaking. So until then, keep creating with the king. Like, comment, share, and we'll see you around. C9, shot K, take one, soft six. Hold yourself. Ready? Ready! And action!